Welcome to your MTT online class. This orientation will serve to um, walk you through how this class works. I'm Miss Oliver and I'm glad to have you in my class. Uh, you should have gotten an email from me already that uh, has your individualized pacing guide attached uh, and that tells you what units you're doing and what you need to have done every single week in order to complete the class successfully. If you didn't get that email from me, please email me right away at eoliver at nr.edu so that uh, we can get that figured out. You might have added the class after I emailed everybody and I didn't notice, so let me know. Uh, all your work for this class will be done on our uh, campus at the MyLabs Plus website and the address is there on your screen, www.nrcc.mylabsplus.com. And you'll also have a guided notebook for this class that comes bundled with your access code for the MyLabs Plus website. Uh, you should print out your um, pacing guide and syllabus and put them in your guided notebook so that you have everything all together. And if you've not yet signed up for NRCC alerts, you should do that from the home page at nr.edu. Just scroll down and click on NRCC alerts. There's nine units total. Uh, for this class and everybody in this class is doing either one, two, three, or four units in a semester. Um, each unit is designed to take five weeks to complete so most of you are doing three units. Um, if you're only doing one or two then you'll be finished with this class early. If you don't complete a unit within that five week period, you'll have to restart it from the beginning. So we really don't want that to happen. You will feel very frustrated if your work that you've already done gets deleted because you didn't meet the deadline. So uh, make sure you keep up with your pacing guide. Um, there is a video that explains how to understand the pacing guide and it's posted in, uh, in the course in My Labs Plus and I'll talk about that in a minute. But your pacing guide uh, basically tells you exactly what you need to get done each week to stay on track. Um, there, so you're doing one, two, or three, or maybe four units this semester. Each unit has several sections in it, like unit one would have section 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, and so on. And within each section, there's five things that you need to do. You need to read and take notes and work examples in your guided notebook. So that's sort of, instead of coming to a lecture classroom, you're learning the material that way. You take a reading quiz that you have to make a 60% on to pass to move to the next step. And that's just a quick quiz on, on whether you've done the reading and understand it. Then you have your homework assignment, and this is probably what will take you the most time for each section. You have to get a 90% or better to move on to the next um, step and I strongly recommend that you try to get 100 on your homework. You can rework any homework problem that you missed so you can get 100 on every homework. Then you can have, you have an optional practice quiz. If you do your homework and you feel ready for the quiz, you can go straight to the quiz, the section quiz. Otherwise you might want to take the practice quiz once. You can take the practice quiz two times and no more. Um, once you've taken it twice, you have to go into the quiz. To pass the quiz, you have to have an 80%. Um, so don't take the quiz until you're ready to pass it. Um, and if you don't pass it the first time, there is, don't just turn around and take it again. Uh, that is a waste of your time. You, you do have five attempts, so you'll be able to take it again. But before you do so, you should read um, in the course kit section in My Labs Plus, there's a, um, uh, and then, oh, sorry, on the home page of My Labs Plus is an announcement about a quiz reminder, so you should read that and follow it. Once you've done all those five steps, you're ready to move to your next section, and you complete all the sections in your unit, then you're ready to review the whole thing, all the sections together, together and practice for the exam. There's a unit review that you have to make 100% on, and then the, your practice exam, you can take it as many times as you need to, but you have to have a 75 or better before you take the unit exam. And I would strongly recommend that you take uh, that practice exam as many times as it takes to uh, be in, well into the 80s, if not better, before you go in to take your unit exam. If you don't pass your unit exam, there's extra work that you have to do, so we'd like to try to avoid that. Um, so don't take it until you're ready. 
So your grade for this class is not based on your scores on the homework or the exams or anything. It's based on um, it passing all your units. So if you're signed up for MTT3, that means you're taking three units this semester, and that means you need to complete all three of them in order to pass the class. If you don't, then you will fail the class. You'll get a U for the class, but you won't lose any credit for any units that you've already completed. You, you won't have to repeat any units. As long as you stay on track with your pacing guide, you will pass the class. No calculators are allowed for Unit 1, so you should not be using a calculator at all while you're working in Unit 1, so you're prepared for the exam where you won't be allowed to use one. And the first two sections of Unit 2 and the first four sections of Unit 3, no calculators are allowed also. And there's a quiz 2.2 and 2, 3.4 um, that have to be taken at the testing center because no calculator is allowed. Uh, there's a calculator recommendation there for a basic scientific calculator that will work for all the rest of the um, nine units. And again, you'll need to go to the testing center to take your exams for this class, one at the end of each unit and an extra quiz for unit two and unit three. So make plans for that. If you are not in our service area and you can't make it to the testing center, then it's your job to arrange for a proctor um, and instructions are for how to do that are uh, in the testing information link in both Blackboard and the course kit in My Labs Plus. There's a deadline for that. You have to take care of that within the first two weeks of this semester. Your syllabus kind of goes through in a little bit more detail what I've gone through already uh, in this PowerPoint, and um, so you definitely want to read through that. Your pacing guide tells you exactly what you need to get done each week. Again, there's a video, uh, a pacing guide orientation video that you should watch if you don't understand um, how to use your pacing guide. So you need your username and password that are on the pacing guide that I emailed you and your access code if you have already purchased it. If you have not already purchased it, that's fine. You'll follow these instructions and get logged in using a temporary access code. You must begin work for this class immediately. If you don't have the book, go ahead and begin work using the temporary access code. If you wait around until your book comes in, if you've ordered it and it's not here or whatever, you're going to fall behind and not pass the class. So it's imperative that you get started right away. Um, you go to the nrcc.mylabsplus.com website, you enter your username and password. If you're new to this class, your password is password. If, it, if you have taken it before, then you've already you possibly have already changed your password and that's whatever it was last semester. Uh, they'll give you some security questions to answer that you'll do only one time. Once you've done them one time, you don't have to do those again. And that's just to help Pearson, the software maker, help you if you lose your password or forget it. Um, after you enter your access code, you will want to go back in and change your password so that it's not the same as everyone else's whose password is password. So when you log in, you'll see a screen that looks something like this, and you'll have a blue highlighted class that should show up. Um, if you don't, then you need to send me an email. And if you do, go ahead and click on that class to enter. And if you've got your access code, if you've already purchased it, get it ready. And if you don't have it yet, click on Temporary Access on the top left side of the screen under Course Home and record the code you're given or you can Control C and to highlight and copy it. Then you click on Getting Started Orientation on the left side of the screen and give it a minute to load and then you click on Orientation Exercises. And the first time that you do this, this screen will pop up. This end user license and privacy agreement. So you click I accept on there and then it will go, it'll ask you for your access code. If you've already purchased it and you have it ready, click on access code. Um, and if you've highlighted, already highlighted the temporary access code, you click on access code. You'll see a screen that looks like this and you wanna click that blue link down here at the bottom where it says switch to multiple boxes for typing your access code. Yours will default start off with multiple boxes. You want to click the link to switch to one big box if you've copied the temporary access code and click inside the box and uh, right click and paste or control V to paste to put it in there or if you wrote it down type it in. 
After you enter your access code um, and you've successfully gone back into your course, you should follow the steps to change your password. Um, there's a video for how to do that uh, also that is under Course Kit on the left-hand side of your screen in MyLabs Plus. Um, and when you've changed your password, you're ready to keep working through your Getting Started checklist. That is posted in Blackboard under Course Documents, or it's posted in the MyLabs Plus under Course Kit. Make sure you're starting on the right unit. Your pacing guide will indicate which units you're completing this semester. Start with the first unit that's listed and click on the button on the left hand side of the screen to go to that unit, start at that unit. The first thing everybody needs to do is the pretest. It's just there to see if you might already know some stuff from that unit. If you don't know anything, that just means you're placed in the right place, don't worry about it. Just go ahead and look through each question and click on submit when you've looked through everything and answered anything that you already know how to do. If you don't know how to do it, just skip it and click submit. Um, some people are interested in trying to pass the, the pretest in order to pass out of that unit, which you can do, but you must have taken that pretest in the testing center and you can only open it one time. So once you've opened it at home, you've, you've run out of the opportunity to be able to test out of it. And honestly, literally about five people over the past three years have successfully tested out of a unit with the pretest. So it's not likely that it's going to happen. So I wouldn't worry about doing that. I would just go ahead and do your pretest. And if you happen to get a passing score on it, but you took it at home, you still have to do the unit, but a lot of your homework will already be worked as done um, that based on how you do on the pretest. If you get things right on the pretest, the software knows that you don't have to do those homework problems. So it'll shorten the unit for you a little bit and you can move faster. Once you've started your pretest, you're ready to go through the five steps for each section. Um, you'll start with read and interact, which means what it says. You read the material in your e-text and fill in your guided notebook as you go along. And your getting started checklist has very good details about what you need to do because there is a video about how to use your um, e-text here. It can be confusing, so you need to watch that video in, under the orientation tab and the getting, it's orientation getting started. So you definitely want to be following your guided, I mean, sorry, your getting started checklist at this point. Um, and then just notice down at the bottom, this is sort of important. You want to log out when you finish working. If you just close the web page, it's going to think that you're still logged in and you're going to get an error message down the road for too much time spent. Um, so what you need to do is make sure you click on the little yellow key in the bottom left corner of the screen in order to log out. Um, it's not very obvious, but that's how you log out of the software. Now, pretty much all the information that you need is in your syllabus, in the Getting Started checklist, and um, under that Getting Started Orientation tab in the software and the Course Kit button. So there's videos, there's FAQs, there's a lot of information that is there available for you. It's a, it's a lot to understand at the beginning if you've never done this kind of course before, but I promise you will quickly start to figure out how it works. But you will have questions, so make sure you read all the material I have given you and watch the videos and all of that because I've probably already answered the question that you have. But feel free to let me know if you need any help, and I'm here to help you. Good luck.